Polls indicate the race for Oregon's 5th Congressional District is a tight one. The 5th District, redrawn after the 2020 census, stretches from Portland to Bend, and it pits Democrat Jamie McLeod Skinner, who upset seven-term Democrat Congressman Kurt Schrader in the primary, against Republican Lori Chavez de Reamer, the former mayor of Happy Valley. Today, Jamie McLeod Skinner, a small business owner and a former city manager and school board member from Central Oregon, returns to Ion Northwest politics. Welcome back. Thank you, Ken. So good to see you again. Well, this race is uh, getting a lot of national attention as Republicans try to take back the House. The fifth does lean slightly Democratic. So what kind of support are you getting from the Democratic Party as a whole? Getting great support really across the board. Yes, from Democrats, but also from independents. I'm the nominee for the Independent Party of Oregon, also for Working Families Party, and Republicans as well. I've got uh, the, the Gladstone mayor is a Republican is endorsing me. I, I was just in uh, Sandium Canyon talking about wildfire issues, which is an area of expertise for me. And I've uh, got support from Republican elected officials there and from uh, the, uh, the former chief of police for the city of Bend. So we've got a broad, a broad uh, swath of support. Many people see this race as a contest of extremes. You is the liberal Democrat, Chavez de Reamer, the conservative Republican. Uh, isn't the electorate in the fifth somewhere in the middle? Well, they're right about my opponent. She is an extremist in terms of her views on, uh, re with regard to our reproductive rights, uh, with a lot of the, the stances she's taken, um, you know, her, her equivocation about uh, January 6th, and the fact that she doesn't acknowledge that Biden actually won the election. I mean, being an election denier is a very extremist view. And the bottom line is I won the primary because of my support uh, amongst folks in Central Oregon who know my work. And when I show up, I work across the divide. I bring people together to get things done. Oregonians are hungry right now for someone who understands the kitchen table issues. I'm working family myself. I'm up against a multimillionaire who doesn't really understand those, those kitchen table issues. Uh, but also my experience of working across the divide to actually get things done is what Oregonians are looking for right now. President Biden just signed the Inflation Reduction Act. It aims to lower prescription drug prices and invest in clean energy. Uh, would those be among your priorities in Congress, and what do you think about the particulars of that act? Those are really important first steps. And let's just, uh, let's just talk about prescription drug prices for a moment. Um, you know, Oregonians are really struggling. The cost of living is going up, wages are not keeping up, and prescription drug prices are a huge issue. And so the, uh, the act was a good first step. It, it looked at insulin and, and took some initial steps on, on uh, lowering the cost of insulin. But that's just for folks who get access to, to Medicare. We need to lower all prescription drug prices. And look, as a small business owner, I get it. You need to cover costs. You need to make a profit. That's fair. But price gouging is not fair. And that's what we're seeing happen right now around prescription drug prices and why it's so critically important for everyday Oregonians to bring those prices down. And on environmental issues, I've literally led wildfire recovery. Our homes are literally burning down here in Oregon. Our family farms are going under. And so these issues are critically important. There's more steps we can be doing to make sure we've got the support on the ground uh, to local communities. But that, uh, the, the Inflation Reduction Act was a very good first step in both those areas. We just got another Fed rate hike that's putting more focus on the economy. Uh, how do we get our economy back, especially in the 5th District, which is a real mix of urban and rural? Well, hardworking Oregonians are struggling. As I mentioned, the high cost of living and wages not keeping up. You know, when I was a kid, my mom had to work three jobs, but food, put a roof over our head and food on our table. And when costs went up, the food budget went down. That's the reality for so many Oregonians right now. We need both short-term and long-term solutions. One short-term solution we were just talking about, lowering the uh, health care costs. Uh, so making sure that corpor um, the, the corporations are not price gouging. Uh, and, and actually, I don't take corporate PAC money for that reason. So I'm accountable to Oregonians and not to, to corporations. In the long term, we need to build stuff here again. We need to create good paying manufacturing jobs. We need to build a 21st century infrastructure that includes clean energy, which will help our, uh, also help our environment. We need to increase the federal minimum wage. And also we need to make investments in things like affordable housing and education and childcare. These are the barriers that working families are facing right now. And those are about investments. From when I was first elected back in 2004, I've always said, 
I don't believe in spending public money. I believe in investing it. And these are investments we need to make in our working families, in our environment, and protecting our democracy. What do you say to people who say you're just too far to the left? I, I tell them to do their homework. I tell them to do their homework. Uh, so again, my track record is really clear in working across the divide. The fact that I've got uh, across the divide to get things done, because here's the bottom line. Regardless of party affiliation, we all want to be able to put a roof over our head and food on our tables. We want opportunities for our kids. We want health care for our families when they're sick. We want safe communities. We don't want our homes to burn down. We don't want our family farms going under. I've worked across the divide on all those issues. Uh, my opponent hasn't. Uh, my opponent actually supported tr uh, Trump's huge tax cuts for the wealthy, saying it, quote, will be good for some of us. I mean, it's, some of those steps were great for multimillionaires like her, but they put such a huge burden on the middle class. We need to be rebuilding the middle class and showing up for working families. And then, you know, one other thing, too, is of the attacks um, that my opponent's making on the government helping out during the pandemic. We've just come out a really tough time and helping out makes sense, but it's incredibly hypocritical because her family business got over a million bucks in pandemic aid. They didn't have to pay back while she was building a multi-million dollar home, second, third home in Arizona. We need folks who are focused, we need leaders who are serious about getting the job done, serious about solutions, and are focused on, on the needs of Oregonians. We are seeing unprecedented gun violence in Oregon, especially in the Portland area. Do you support more gun restrictions at the national level or at the state level for that matter? So, look, my uh, dad hunted put food on the table. Uh, my father-in-law grew up hunting in, in Eastern Oregon. Um, these are, you know, we need common sense solutions to make sure our kids and our families are safe. We just recently had a horrific shooting, mass shooting in Central Oregon. That could have been another Uvalde or another Buffalo, except for a grocery store clerk stepping up uh, losing his own life in protecting others. This is a serious issue, and we have to take serious steps to move forward on these issues. There are really straightforward, common sense uh, gun safety issues that the vast majority of even responsible gun owners agree on. Those are the steps we need to take. Uh, those are the steps we need to take. And again, also taking this issue seriously. Quite frankly, after the horrific shooting in Bend, while we were you know, providing support for a community and helping people both grieve and then also feel safe about going back to school again and all the things that parents were worried about, my opponent was off uh, doing a publicity stunt at the border. We need serious leaders who are focused on bringing people together to solve our problems. You have about a minute left, but I want to ask you about this. After the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade, we saw more women coming to Eastern Oregon for abortions. How much support should the state give to women who are seeking abortions here? Look, there's no clearer difference in this race than on this issue. I fundamentally believe that, uh, that the decision to have a child is being a woman, her doctor, and her God, and that government has no business telling us what to do with our bodies or when to start our families. Uh, my opponent would ban abortion before a woman even knows she's pregnant. That's an extremist view. And uh, politicians have no place in the doctor's office. So yes, we need to look at reproductive health care. That includes birth control. It uh, also includes access to abortion. Also pre and postnatal care and child care as well. There's so often that people talk about this issue and forget about uh, so the support needed both prior, during, and, and after. Jamie McLeod Skinner, thank you for joining me again on Eye on Northwest Politics. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity.